Welcome to the Volunteer Engagement Webinar for Gutsy Walk 2019. We're really excited to let you know that we've got about 16, 17 participants on this call, so that's a great showing, and we're really excited to share this information with you. Some of you will be returning volunteers, and so again, some of this information might be very familiar to you, but uh, we hope that it's a great refresher and that you can get something out of this webinar and of the information that we're going to share with you. We're going to ask you to please type in your questions as they occur to you using the, um, the, uh, the question box that you see in your control box on, this, on your screen. But we're going to answer your questions at the end of the presentation. Because this is recorded, we want to make sure that we have a nice flow of information that it's going to be easy to review after the fact, and then we will compile all of the questions in one section called Q&A. Okay, so this is the panel that you should be seeing on your screen, and we've circled here for you the section that you can type into when you have a question, and we will, again, answer all of those questions at the end of the presentation, and we'll also save those questions and the answers so that we can share them with you and with others who weren't able to join us this evening. And again, um, please mute and keep your, um, your controls on mute so that we have a limited amount of background noise as we go forward. Okay, the agenda this evening. You may sense that we have a theme going on here. We're going to walk with me, step right up, talk about next steps. We will hit the ground walking and, of course, walk the talk, and as I said, Q&A at the end of the presentation. So let's get starting. Gutsy Walk 2019 has a huge goal. This will not be a big surprise to anyone. Our goal this year is 3.4 million, and we can do it. There's no question that we can do it. We know that... Um, it takes a lot of people to get this job done. So we're going to talk about Walk With Me. How are you as a volunteer going to enlist the help of everybody you can think of so that you can go from one or two very dedicated and loyal volunteers to a big group of people all gathered around to help you achieve your goals? But let's talk about why volunteers volunteer? How do we get from one or two to the very many that we need and why will they join us in the first place? So we need to understand what's in it for them. And there are many motivations for volunteering. Volunteer Canada has developed a value of volunteering wheel that you see here and it captures some of the reasons. The well-being of our volunteers. But well-being contributes to their for themselves but also to the well-being of loved ones, friends, colleagues, and those in the community who are facing Crohn's and colitis on a daily basis. Skills development is another reason. Participating in an event like Gutsy Walk is a great opportunity to learn something new and add to your list of skills for future volunteer jobs, for employment, for school, for so many reasons. And of course, a sense of belonging. Building community around a common cause is a very powerful motivator. For many individuals and families, the sense of belonging, knowing that they are not alone in their journey with these illnesses is comforting and motivating, and new, integrating newcomers. Some of your walks will take place in communities that are welcoming newcomers to Canada or who are new to your region or neighborhood. Collaborating on a charitable event can build new relationships among individuals, businesses, and community organizations and provide the welcoming space for newcomers to meet people and build connections all while supporting an important and worthwhile cause. And of course, we need to know what those volunteers bring to us. So what's in it on our side of the negotiation? So volunteers, as we know, are the lifeblood of this organization. With your support and guidance, over 2,000 individuals are currently engaged in supporting Crohn's and Colitis Canada by giving us time and talent. We also gain by having the unique skills that each volunteer brings to us. With each contribution of time and skills, our capacity builds and allows us to achieve the amazing results that you get year after year at Gutsy Walk. 
Recruiting volunteers can sometimes feel like a giant game of hide and seek, and you are perpetually it. But hopefully some of the tips and ideas that we generate tonight will make the task a little bit easier. First, we want to tackle the question of who's it? You don't have to recruit all the volunteers all by yourself. We want you to enlist the support of your captains and chairs and other committee members. So what we need to know is where are all of these volunteers hiding? Well, they're actually in many different places. Think of reaching out to your personal networks, your family, your friends, your neighbors, your colleagues, and the professional networks that you, ha that you have, professional associations or clubs, teams, um, and your faith congregations. And remember that each committee member also has the same network and encourage them to reach out as well, expanding all of the circles that you can reach and incrementing with every new volunteer the number of people that you can reach who will be, pro who will be potential volunteers for your event. The how, once we know the who, we need to know how. And moving beyond those that you can tag in person or by phone and email, think about the bulletin boards that you can access online bulletin boards like Facebook and other social media, but also offline. Thinking about Starbucks and Second Cup and Coffee Time and other individual gathering places in your communities that very likely have a bulletin board where you can post the opportunities and um, events that are happening in your, name, in your region. We can provide you with a digital copy of a flyer that you can print out and post in your community. And if you want, you can edit those flyers so that the pictures reflect perhaps your Betsy Walk 2018 and the success and how much fun it looks like. You can have a picture from your own community that will speak to members of your own community. And you can also consider targeting specific skills. Even though event day is a more broad opportunity with general tasks like registration and um, food and beverage, you may also call out for more specific skills, such as technical skills for managing your scheduling, or someone who has a second language that can reach out to volunteers and also thank volunteers in the other language. So, we talked about who and how, and now the what. What do we need our volunteers to do? So with your committee that may already be in place, and don't, don't forget that we're here to help you to place those people in your committees. We will, we will support you in searching for those, but I know that some of you have a good number of volunteers ready and set to go on your committee. So review the event day roles for volunteers and reflect on last year's walk to get a sense of this year's requirements. Thinking about how many event day volunteers did you have last year and were were, was it enough? Was it too many? Did people feel that they hadn't been given significant jobs and were left with nothing to do, which hopefully is not going to be the case? Did some roles require more or fewer people than you had assigned to them? These are the things that you can think about and, and tweak for next year. Um, think also about anybody that you may have volunteering that may need some kind of accommodation and whether or not you can accommodate a volunteer that may have some different requests. Think about your existing resources, local high schools. Don't forget all of those students who need to collect their volunteer hours and um, who may also have connections with teams and different groups that come out of either the school or the local community uh, that are, that are um, key for young people. And don't forget that students who participate on a team who walk don't get volunteer hours. That's a different, that's a different thing. And ensure, of course, that any high school students bring a waiver signed by a parent or guardian in order to complete their volunteering. Um, think about local colleges and universities. And where there are employment or community centers, there are often online and physical bulletin boards where postings can be put up and volunteers can be recruited. And don't forget that your best resource is past event volunteers. Um, as long as a volunteer application form was completed or a past event schedule was submitted, we have the information about past volunteers and we can help you reach out to them with a request for them to come back this year and help out once again. 
Uh, we always want to plan for gaps. We want to make sure that you are having some brainstorming sessions and identifying local resources that may have been overlooked. So let us know how we can help you do that. We can help you do some of that brainstorming and do some of that research, research about what's available in your community. And of course, we will be once again posting all of the Gutsy Walk opportunities on Charity Village for every regional site. Um, we will also be looking at other online volunteer postings such as Volunteer Toronto and Volunteer Canada sites. If there have been any significant changes in your event day volunteer requirements, um, if you've changed location or other factors that are affecting what you need on the day of your walk, let us know and let your staff partner know so that we can look at all the options and um, think about ways that we can fill your gaps and make sure that you have the volunteers that you need to have a successful day. So, what can you do? Connect with your committee. Think of new ways that volunteers can add value to the event. Get a list of past year's Gutsy Walk event day volunteers, and as I said, that's something that we can send to you. Find local places to post your volunteer needs. Direct interested people to our online volunteer application form. We'll be using directions to that form in many different places on our website so that wherever people land, they will be reminded to click here to apply. And don't forget that we're a team. Together we can make 2019 the best year ever, and we will do everything we can to support your team and your walk. Um, we will have position descriptions for the Gutsy Walk Committee member roles. They'll be available on the volunteer toolkit in our website. We will post on Charity Village, as I said, we will also be working with our marketing and communications team to make sure that all of our social media platforms are buzzing with Gutsy Walk news and posts and pictures to get people excited about being part of this amazing event. And of course, I'm going to say it over and over again because it's so important, the event day waiver for any volunteers who surprise you that you didn't know were going to be there have blank copies on hand and reminder that anyone 17 or under has to have a waiver signed by a parent or guardian in order to volunteer. So just an overview. Make sure that our online volunteer application form is completed. That's really critical because we need the information um, about each volunteer to be entered into our database it gives us the opportunity to continually reach out to people and know how they helped us in the past and we can let them know how they can help us in the future. Screening and communication is a little bit more simplified for event day volunteers than for other volunteer opportunities. Um, and so we, we try to keep it to having the online form completed and you can always fill it in on behalf of someone if for any reason, they're not tech savvy, they don't, they don't have a, a computer, there are, for any reason, you can always print and fill it in um, old school, pen and ink. Um, you can also do it online on behalf of someone else. The important thing is that the information that's on that form comes to us so that we can track it. And of course, event day orientation and experience. We want to plan for the orientation and, and not allow it to just happen without thought. We want to make sure that we are welcoming volunteers, ensuring that they have the tools needed to complete their job, and we above all want to keep it short and lively and enthusiastic with lots of thank you messaging. Um, so a quick overview of some of the resources that we have, and these are typically available online. In the volunteer toolkit, you see the link on the screen. Um, but again, once again, the waiver. Uh, we have communication plan and scripts. So there are samples of letters and different forms and documents that you can use to communicate with your volunteers. We have an event day one pager. And this is the one document that actually 
uh, does require a fair bit of editing, but it's very simple to do. And we want you to make sure that this event day one pager accurately reflects your location. So it has your location and maybe a map and some information about where people should gather, where people can park, that sort of thing. So that one thing will be quite unique to your location. And we also have a roles description one pager with special thanks to Carol Lynn because she put together an amazing document that has every single role listed and a very, very brief one or two sentences about what that role entails. It makes it a very friendly introduction to the roles associated with Sexy Walk volunteering and um, it's a great document and we will make sure that that's available to you. We have also scripts and a plan for orientation and of course the all important thank you. So if you're at a loss for words other than thank you, um, which comes very naturally to all of you, we know, we can provide you with sample thank you notes and different, word, different letters that you can send out to various volunteers that gave of their time and talent on Gutsy Walk. Okay. So we're going to move to scheduling. So important. We should anticipate 10 to 25% drop off rate from recruited event day people. So when you're thinking about how many people and at what role and at what time, think about the uh, no show because it will happen. We have some general guidelines for the number of volunteers that are needed at your event, but please remember that these are guidelines based on historic data collected over the years. It may not reflect your particular walk. So if you um, you see on the screen that uh, 50 or 60 volunteers are needed, but in years past, you've done very nicely with 35 people and it's working in your community, then don't feel that you absolutely must have 60 people just because it's appearing on a slide. That is not the case. We want you to be mindful of what's working in your community and continue to do what's working in your community and reach out to us for help if you find that some things aren't working and you need to change it up a little. Allow friends and family to volunteer together. It's always more fun when you can do something with someone that you know. And you may want to have an incentive for the top word of mouth recruiter. Whoever shows up on walk day and brings the most people with them um, could get a small token prize. But definitely encourage people to bring one. Um, bring someone with them and have fun together. Don't forget about transition times. If people are moving from one area to another or going on break, uh, you don't want to have gaps in your schedule and you don't want to have a station or uh, location within your walk that is suddenly empty of all volunteers. So thinking about the day and how it's going to unfold. And this is where floaters can come in. It's a great idea to have a couple of people or even a few who can jump in where needed, that can um, run and give someone a break if they need it, can be volunteers and can be walking among your participants and just making sure that volunteers have their water and snacks and cover breaks, but also so that participants see that there's always someone around if they have a question or they need assistance of any kind. And this is just one example of a volunteer schedule. You don't have to have all kinds of colors and uh, different grids. This is just one way of keeping track of the volunteers who will help you on walk day. Um, and I'm going to actually turn it over to Spiri, who's going to talk to you about another fantastic way to keep track of volunteers and ensure that everyone is scheduled and all of your shifts are covered. Go ahead. Hi everybody, this is Spiri. Um, those of you that are returning um, committee members may have may recall me mentioning this um, last year. Um, basically, signup.com is a free online scheduling tool and is available to you to use. Um, now, the key benefits of utilizing this is, are basically that it, it significantly reduces the back and forth of email communications required to assign event day volunteers their designated tasks for the day. Individuals could be sent a link up for their desire, and they can actually sign up for their desired spot. And you can even give them the authorization to sign up a friend or a family member. Or you can have a designated signup.com administrator 
who can register individuals um, on their behalf and then set them up to receive the um, automated com confirmation and reminder communication. It gives you an at-a-glance and live status of assigned versus unassigned spots. So you can sort of zoom in on those that you need to focus in on, that you need to uh, recruit for. Um, it enables automated reminders to be generated to volunteers prior to the event, and you determine whether you want that to be the day before, two days before, or maybe three days before. Um, it easily generates a sign-up check-in sheet for the event day, and you can print that off. Um, and also it has sort of an automated post-event thank you to all registered volunteers that you may or may not opt to utilize. And it also has um, a way of uh, capturing sort of post-event data that you can forward to your staff partner um, post-event. Now, rather than me rambling on about how great SignUp is, we actually went and got some um, testimonials from innovative Gutsy Work Committee volunteers and some supporting staff members who jumped right in last year and started to use it just to get a feel for it and see how it worked for them. So I'm just going to read through those testimonials to you. Um, so here we have, I thought it worked fantastic, and I also had several of the new volunteers remark on how easy it was to use to get reminders, etc., I would use it again. I didn't want to like it because there are so many different things we need to already be proficient in as DCs, and I thought it would be another overly complicated program that under-delivers, but I'm happy to admit that I was 100% wrong. I definitely think it's a great resource. It is very user-friendly and easy to navigate. It takes you through step-by-step -step how to create the sign-up and includes a tutorial video online if you have never used it before. When creating the sign-up, the organizer can also pick whether or not you want to allow participants to see who else has signed up for a particular shift. I would suggest allowing them to see who else has signed up, as I know many volunteers like to sign up for shifts with someone they already know. Another great thing about it is that as a volunteer, after you sign up for a particular volunteer shift, it will send you a reminder email the day before your, you volunteer, which saves the organizer time in having to email all the volunteers to remind them. The number one thing I love is that it helps eliminate a lot of back and forth emails. I didn't have to repeat the same information to every volunteer about the different roles available, role descriptions, time commitments, shifts, etc. Mostly everything was automated. It was very easy to set up for one day events or events with several days. The tool is flexible and easy to use, and our volunteers can see which roles are available rather than contacting us for an update. Volunteers don't have to create an account on signup.com as well. Overall, it makes it easier for all parties and eliminates a lot of admin manual work to schedule volunteers. The user testimonials continued. This one here warranted a full slide to itself. So it's very simple and not time consuming to enter details for 72 shifts and position descriptions. The sign up link made it simple to email the event, sign up to the volunteers, add to newsletters and post on social media. 46 individuals signed up through the link, each received automatic shift sign up confirmation emails and automatic reminders a couple of days before the event. I was able to easily see who had signed up for which shifts and which shifts still needed attention. I could easily run reports to get contact details and shift check-in lists. I could easily run a report to share names of volunteers with a concession company to facilitate their own volunteer check-in procedure to ensure our volunteers have no trouble entering the grounds. You can download an Excel and remove contact information. Users told me it was very easy to sign up very easy to switch shifts or exit their participation, and very convenient, saving them lots of back and forth emails. You can choose to receive a notification each time someone signs up or not. You can add your logo or the event JPEG. It is easy for the admin to sign up a volunteer who does not have access to the email using own email, so that the admin gets the reminder and is queued to follow up with the, that volunteer by phone. You can describe each shift and event exactly as you want. 
The reporting made it simple for me to follow up with any new event volunteers to see if they would like to sign up for Crohn's Colitis Canada volunteering or attend upcoming events. There is a lot of functionality I did not use, but will explore for future events. I've used them for a couple of smaller events as well, but using it for this event was the one that sold me on it. So that's the end of our testimonials. Um, the last thing I'm going to go through is actually um, best practices shared by the 2018 Vancouver Gutsy Walk volunteer captain. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to join us on the call today and share her experience. So she just gave me a little write up that I could share with you on her behalf. So I used it last year to help me organize where everybody needed to be identify who they would be reporting to, and to get people signed up in multiple roles. It was super helpful in seeing the way it would all unfold. As the volunteers signed up and Terry forwarded them to me, I sent them a welcome to the team email, which included the link to the signup.com to get first choice on positions still available, invite, invite to the volunteer Facebook group, and a clear message that I'm here for them to answer whatever questions they have. Some signed up directly, others I registered in there so captains can see who was assigned to them and people could see if friends wanted to volunteer and be stationed with them. And overall, as a team, it was no secret where we stood with volunteer support. Great program overall for communication once people can figure it out. I have not set up this year's yet, but it will be by the end of this month and we already have 19 volunteers from last year who have confirmed with me directly plus whomever Terry has that I haven't received yet. I'm looking forward to exploring more about this program already having success last year. Now, the good news for our uh, volunteer captain in Vancouver is she doesn't actually need to recreate the schedule. We can actually pull up last year's schedule and update the date to reflect this, the 2019 date and just tweak the schedules as necessary. So next steps related to the signup.com. Um, we are planning on doing a webinar training session um, it, during April. So if you can, if you're interested and would like to jump on board with the signup.com uh, tool, please email me directly. This is my email address, and um, I'll keep you posted. And uh, we'll schedule the the time for the training. Uh, right now, I'm going to hand it back to Ellen to finish off. Our last few slides. Oh, a little technical difficult here. There we go. Okay, so we uh, we hope that you will all hit the ground walking, and remember that uh, the equation for an ideal event day experience is have fun, be active, learn us about us and the cause, and it will equal a memorable experience and positive ambassadors for us within our volunteer networks. This is our goal. And some more tips for the volunteer captain. Uh, explain what types of volunteer positions are available and what type of person would fit best in the role. Have people confirm a week or two before the event that they still plan on attending, keeping in mind the no-show uh, factor of 10 to 25%. Assign captains for each station, and typically these would be returnee volunteers who are familiar with the walk and some of the roles that they may have already uh, been successful with, so they can elevate to captains. Uh, be flexible. Um, remember that um, it's it's a busy busy day, and we need to kind of go with the flow sometimes and be ready for the unexpected. Have a way that volunteers can contact you throughout the day if you're not going to be stationed in a central location. So cell phone, ideally, is probably the easiest way. Of course, make sure that everybody gets uh, food and sna food, snacks, water, breaks, all the things to make, the, make them comfortable that day as they volunteer. Keep records for next year so that we can just get these people to keep coming back for us. And ask them for feedback. Um, it's really important to know how they felt about their volunteer experience. And we want to hear everything so that we can continually improve the experience for volunteers, change what needs to be changed, keep what we are working with that's really good, um, and always improve for next year. And of course, let promising volunteers know about other volunteer opportunities. 
So people who are there for event day may decide that they had a great experience and they would like to be on the planning committee for next year. And perhaps some of the folks who are helping you to plan Gutsy Walk can also be called upon to plan other events and initiatives. So keep your eye open for those folks who are bright lights. Um, the orientation is a really uh, it's a really good opportunity to personally welcome and thank our volunteers, give them an overview of the Gutsy Walk and Crohn's and Colitis Canada as an organization. And this is a great time to go over the last minute changes and those curves that always get thrown at us. Uh, share announcements about role assignments and make sure that every volunteer is acquainted with their role. They know where they need to be, they have a schedule for the day, and they have any materials or equipment that they need to do their job. Uh, don't forget that on orientation always helps to make the event run smoothly. It keeps everyone safe. It allows people to have fun and feel good about helping, knowing that there won't be any surprises and they'll feel comfortable and ready to take on their job. So, ready, set, go. Creating a great event day experience for volunteer includes making them feel welcome, as they said, uh, perhaps having a dedicated space for volunteers to register, confirm the location of the washrooms, the first aid station, let them know that there will be break times and how they can reach you if they need a break before scheduled, um, just a, a general welcome. And of course, as I said, make sure any materials or equipment that is needed is ready so that nobody has to go looking for you or for the items that they need once the participants have started to arrive. Introduce them to their teammates for the day. And this is really critical because we want people to feel that they are part of a team, um, that it's not one individual or a couple of family members who arrive together who will be working alone in isolation. We know that that's not the case. We know that Gutsy Walk always produces a a very energetic team feeling, and we want each new person to feel that they are welcome to the team. And let, let them know that what they're doing is so very important, and, and share with them the impact that this one day has on so many thousands of people, um, and how much we value what they give to us on that day. And don't forget, if students are collecting hours, we need to sign their paperwork and they need to sign our paperwork. Be available to um, introduce your volunteers to a contact. If it's not going to be you, you might have someone who's sort of a, at the help desk and uh, make sure that they know who they can contact or run to for support if they have questions and they don't know the answers. Let them know that there's someone there for them. If you can, have a pre-event walkthrough at the location of your walk, it can be really helpful. And this is one case where the students can get extra hours um, over and above the actual walk day. We realize it's not always a possibility given your location and your schedules, um, but if you can have a walkthrough, it's always a great idea. And um, our last section of the agenda is what we call walk the talk. And that's really just about making sure that we follow through on the appreciation and the recognition of all of our volunteers, you included. We always want to remember to be thankful and to share our thanks with everyone, to acknowledge the amazing work that our volunteers do, not just uh, in a letter or three weeks later, but even as the day is unfolding, to say, wow, we are so grateful that you're here today. Thank you so much for helping us to make this day a success. Ways that you can do this in the follow-up and saying thank you, um, make sure that your signing in and signing out sheet is complete and that way we will know who to thank and we will know that they were there um, and we can make sure we reach out to them. So this is a goal for us is to have 100% documentation on all of the volunteers. Um, be prepared to send out a thank you email to volunteers three days after the event or even earlier, depending on, uh, you know, the size of the walk, the number of people that you have to reach out to, highlighting the key achievements and success. And please remember that we will help you with this. We have templates and we have samples that you can use um, and just do a fill in the blank, but make sure it's relevant to your location. And if you can, highlight a couple of things that are very specific to your walk so that people know that it's not a form letter. And we can help. 
we will have a nationally prepared thank you message that will go to all volunteers and it will share with them the overall event results nationally. And with the information that you provide, we will track and update all of the volunteer records. So we will make sure that we have the necessary information that you need to go back to those folks, not just to say thank you, but to um, continually reach out to them and engage them in your community. And we will continue to gather the tools and the resources and the best practices in order to improve the support that we can offer to you. So final steps, uh, ensure that your Gutsy Walk Chair and Local Development Coordinator have copies of any of the documents that you used or that you will be using. Confirm the complete list of volunteers, even the volunteers who did not show up. Uh, we can always send them a quick note that says, we're really sorry you weren't able to make it. We hope we can count on you for next year. Please don't forget about us and we won't forget about you. Flag any issues or concerns and ideas for ways that we can improve and share that with your walk chair, your local development coordinator, and of course with us. We always want to strive to do better. And some timelines to keep in mind in the planning stages, ideally if um, filling in your gaps can be done six to eight weeks before the walk or earlier depending on, on how many people you have on your team and, and how often you can arrange to meet and talk about your walk, um, but six to eight weeks is a good guideline to know that you have your committee in place and that you've got your outreach to your event day volunteers ready to go, which would be one month or earlier, a little bit earlier, before your walk date. So we know our walk date is June 2nd, so in the month of April and May, we want to be looking at the event day volunteer opportunity. And of course, coming back to that all important volunteer application form, Ideally, we will have those in hand, you will have them in hand two weeks before your walk. And of course, the final push, so sending out volunteer schedules one week before and reminders three days before. Remembering that signup.com will take care of a lot of this work for you, so if you think that you can get engaged with signup.com, some of this will be really easy to do. Um, a reiteration that we definitely want to thank our volunteers as soon after the walk as possible and not to worry that it will be overlapping with a national thank you. We really think that you can say thank you more than once and from different sources and that in fact it's really important that there is that local um, thank you and, and appreciation as well as from the organization overall. And thank you. Thank you for your time this evening. Thank you for making the commitment that you have made to Crohn's and Colitis Canada and to the Gutsy Walk. You have to know that it is a very big gift that you are giving to us and giving us your time and your talent for this signature event that is so important to this organization and to all of the people who are dealing with Crohn's disease and colitis. So a huge thank you at this stage as we go forward together. Um, and on that note, I'm going to ask you if you have any questions about moving forward with this amazing event. We're going to look at our questions box and see if anybody has shared their comments or their questions that we can uh, look at right now. Okay, so one of the first questions is, is there an age limit in order to volunteer? I'm going to say that the short answer is no. Um, you can hopefully find a role for a volunteer of almost any age, keeping in mind, of course, that younger volunteers may need some adult supervision, but you may have families that wish to volunteer together, and that could be multi-generational. Um, just keeping in mind that everybody has to sign the waiver, and those who are 17 or under have to have it signed by a parent or guardian. And the next question is, I work at Queen's University. They have a website that they post volunteer positions available. Volunteers can go in and create a profile of their skills, time, available, and contact Queen's if they are interested in a position. Could CCC think about this idea? Absolutely. We definitely want to take advantage of all of the um, online, offline bulletin boards that are available to us. And we, we think that campuses in general are a great place 
to find volunteers. So we will definitely follow up on that. And thank you, Melanie, for sharing that with us. Um, it could be part of the online process and extra questions to ask. There might be extra questions to ask walkers. Um, yes, so recogni recognizing that when we use the online or offline volunteer postings that are part of another organization, we may have to tweak our own posting to meet the needs and the criteria that that um, establishment has. And we're very willing to do that. We're very willing to um, create a poster, create a form that will meet their needs. Just um, so we can get the word out. We really want to spread the, walk, the word about the walk and the volunteer opportunities as far and as wide as possible. Um, so another question is, if a volunteer is a returning one from last year, do they still have to register again this year? So if by registration you mean on the day of, then the answer is yes. But they don't have to complete the waiver again, and they don't have to complete the online volunteer application form. We will already have their contact information from last year. We simply want to know that they were, in fact, there. Um, and then we have another question. Usually in March, we like to call past participants in order to inform them of the March Madness contest, as well as to ask them if the 2019 pledge form has been received. Will the pledge form be sent to all participants, and which month will it be received? Um, I'm going to turn it to Naval, who can answer that question better than I can. We haven't finalized that decision yet, but we will have the March Madness contest, and the reminders will be sent out February, um, like end of February, by eBlast. So um, you will also do the call to participants, like it will start from February 25th. But by that time, we will know if uh, any like physical like pledge form or anything will be sent to past participants. We will also, um, maybe we can unmute Heidi, yeah. like the guest of yeah, if she wants to add anything. Yeah. Heidi, you're unmuted. Hi, everyone. It's Heidi here. I'm just making sure that everyone can hear me. Yeah? You guys can yeah. hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, yes, no, thanks for the question. I, I can't see it here, uh, but I believe we're asking about um, if the pledge forms are gonna, going to be mailed. Uh, in the past, we have mailed them to the past three years, like all of the past three years' participants. Um, as a reminder, and uh, we have discovered that it's a lot of cost, and um, we have had feedback from participants that uh, it's better like to um, you know save, save the environment and like not like have these mailed, but have them mailed on a on a request basis, uh, and also this can be printed on the website directly. And more and more people are also. Um, fundraising online instead of offline. However, we're also thinking of something um, midway to that, uh, I mean like meeting in the middle, so as like, to also remind others, like not just completely cut it off. So uh, we will still do some mailing, but that hasn't um, been uh, finalized yet as to like which group, uh, but there will be like another, like another way of communicating to them. And also, as Neval mentioned, there will be retention calls that will be happening in February as well anyway which is like for uh, volunteers to call uh, people in the past three years, just reminding them to uh, register and letting them know that there's a March Madness contest going on just to make sure that they don't miss out on that. Okay. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you. So, okay, so I think that takes care of the pledge form question. Uh, we have another question uh, coming specifically from Calgary about signup.com and having the webinar earlier than April, I think we had said it was. So absolutely, please reach out to us if you have um, an interest in any aspect of volunteer engagement and how best to recruit and maintain your volunteer team. We're, we're absolutely delighted to speak with you individually or in small groups when it's convenient for you. So we can definitely put together the training and offer it on different occasions to different teams, um, and uh, we can definitely meet your schedule. That's really important to us. So let us know how you would like to receive the information and when is best for you, and we will make it work. Oh, the customized flyers. Where can I access the customizable flyers? We will make sure that every DC has access to those and ask the DCs, the development coordinators, 
to share those with their Gutsy Walk teams. Um, they are very easy to use. It's a matter of just typing over the fields on a, on a document that's been set up exactly for that purpose. And it's a drag and drop for the photos. So you can switch out the photos and you can change it up as many times as you like. We'll make sure that every team has access to that document through the uh, staff partners. That's all our questions. Um, if anyone wants, uh, has anything they'd like to add or be unmuted briefly, um, there's a little um, icon in your bar that looks like a little hand. If you can just, you can click on your hand up and we can uh, unmute you. Or you can, again, if you prefer to type in a question, if there's any more. Okay. All right, then. Uh, so, I, so as a bit of a wrap-up, a um, couple of things. Again, we will be sharing the slides that we presented here tonight with the um, narration on our website. So you can go back to this presentation and look at anything that you may have missed or that you want to pay a little bit more attention to. We will also include um, as an addendum to the presentation all of these questions with the answers. And we will also ask you to share your thoughts about this webinar and volunteer engagement training generally. Uh, let us know whether this content was helpful to you, whether this format is helpful to you, um, the timing, whether or not our schedule was um, effective and convenient for you. We want to make sure that you have the support you need, and we want the emphasis to be on the support that you need. So tell us what's um, important to you and how we can best support you so that we can all be successful with Gutsy Walk. It's a huge endeavor and um, we know we can make it better year over year with your help and that's our goal. So let us know how we can help. I'm going to say goodnight on behalf of Spiri and Naval and the whole Gutsy Walk team and everyone at Crohn's and Colitis Canada. And once again, thank you so much for everything that you do for us.